Hi, welcome to my session of creating a HANA multi-tenant database. Today I'm going to show you how to install an SAP multi-tenant SAP HANA database and our SID name will be MT1 for multi-tenant 1. Our number will be 80 and we're going to be installing that on server HDBSOBW02. This is built on a HANA server that is certified by Bluemix and ordered through the Bluemix portal. So I went ahead and ordered my server right off of the IBM um, portal and I have that up and running in about an hour. I ordered the SAP HANA certified one terabyte and it has 60 cores and that's all ready to go for us. That is running on Red Hat. So I am now logged on to my Bluemix certified HANA server and it's all ready to install SAP HANA and I'm logged in as root. SAP HANA is very very simple to install. So on my certified Bluemix HANA server I'm going to be running the HANA database lifecycle management GUI to install. I'm using the option for Linux x86-64 because this is on Red Hat. I'm going to select the SAP HANA database option and then this is going to be a new system. And I'm only going to select the SAP database client to be installed with this. And this would be installed as a single host system. My host name will stay unchanged. Uh, my HANA shared is unchanged. And my system ID is going to be MT1. And my instance number is going to be 80. And I do have to do a drop down for that. So I'll scroll all the way down until I find 80. And on the database mode, we're going to go ahead and change that to be multi-containers. And for the system usage, this is going to be a test server. And we're not going to restrict the memory allocation. We'll just let it um, allocate all the memory in the box. And we'll go ahead and leave the data volumes on the standard defaults for HANA, which is the HANA data HANA log. And the source host name will remain R02. And for our password, I'll go ahead and I'll enter that. And we'll just go ahead and leave the system user ID and the shell and the home directory as the defaults. We're going to go ahead and put in the system password. And then it's ready to go. So you really have minimum parameters to install on HANA. As I mentioned, it's very simple. Um, some of the other SAP products, you have to put many, many more parameters. As you can see, this will install fairly quickly. Okay, so our HANA system has been installed successfully. So we'll go check out the install by logging onto the workbench. The syntax for opening your SAP HANA cockpit is HTTP with the um, host name and then you have 80 or you can use um, 43 if you want to change that to the secure connection which is a better practice and then this 80 here is our instance number and then the rest is the SAP slash HANA slash admin slash cockpit so we'll go ahead and put that into our browser 
And the first thing that it will do is ask for my logon. So I will go ahead and log on with my system user. And then I'll put in my password. And on the first time that you log on, it will ask you um, if you want to be assigned the necessary role to open the HANA cockpit. And I'll just say OK. And we'll, we'll just continue with that. So once this opens up, we can see that we now have an option to manage our databases. Notice the name of our system is systemdb at mt1, which is the um, SID that we put in there. And it says that we have one host and one database. If we click on Manage Databases, it will take us into the database MT1, and the database name is SystemMD. And if we click on that, it will show the standard services that we have running on our host, HDB SOBW02. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open our um, HANA Studio. And we'll go ahead and add that entry. Looks like we got a system database. So that shows up. So now we want to add a database into our container. So we'll just right mouse click and we'll go ahead and open the SQL console. And we are going to create a database. And we're going to call this one SNQ for SAP NetWeaver Quality. And we're going to go ahead and put in the system user password, which I'll block out. So our database was um, created. And I'm going to go ahead and create two more databases because I'm going to be installing a Fiori on this system as well. So I'm going to have that one be FIQ. And then I'll put my password in there and execute. Okay, I created FIQ successfully in a less than 40 seconds. I'm going to create one more database and it's going to be for my S4 HANA. And I'm going to name that one S4Q. So I have all my databases set up now to create my entire landscape. Okay, and that last database it got created in about 40 seconds. And now I can easily add these into my HANA Studio screen. Um, all I have to do is, I've already added the SNQ at MTI. So we're going to go ahead and add the other two that we created. So it's always going to be instant 80 and it's just going to be the tenant database. And we'll add the one for Fiori, which is FIQ. And this is Fiori database. And 
we'll go ahead and put in the system ID and the system user. And we'll go ahead and store the password. And go ahead and finish. And we can add one more, which was our um, one for our um, S for HANA. So it's going to be on host two, instance 80. It's a tenant database, and that was our S4Q. And this is our HANA database for S4HANA. It's quality. And then we'll go ahead and put in our system user and our password. And we'll go ahead and store that. Then we don't have to add it each time. And finish. And now we have all of our, we have our tenant database as well as our our system database, which is our system DB at MT1. And then you have, we've added three tenant databases into that. And they just look like regular HANA databases. So this concludes installing and setting up an SAP HANA multi-tenant database system.